The following podcast contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Showdown Podcast presents The Survivor Series with Corey Miller, Vic Miller, and Brad Scott. This week's episode, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Welcome to the Showdown Podcast. This is one of our Survivor Series episodes, and I am Brad Scott. As always, I'm joined by Corey Miller. Hello, hello. And we, of course, always are joined by Vic Miller. Vic, you going to say anything? All right, I think Vic is mad at the show. He's giving us the cold shoulder treatment. Yeah, he's. Uh, he, I think it's the silent treatment the cold shoulder treatment does anybody did they add treatment when they say cold shoulder i do i don't i don't think that's right i I'm, think I'm you're s- mixing that up I'm it's starting a new silent thing. treatment or cold shoulder i don't think it's you can combine the two. Oh well i'm starting i'm starting a new thing so uh vic yeah vic's apparently mad just chime in whenever you're ready vic um this week uh we watched peewee's big adventure a 1985 comedy directed by Tim Burton, starring Pee Wee Herman and... Uh, and a bike. And a bike. And uh, the fat guy from Leprechaun. The overgrown kid. The overgrown... Yeah. Who is basically this in this movie as well. Yeah. I, I, um, I like to Mark believe, Holton. I like to believe it's the same character. They kind of come across the same, to be honest. Yeah. Maybe it's... Uh, which Was Leprechaun first? No. This was this was eighty five. Okay, okay, okay. So this is so Leprechaun's after he lost all that money. Yeah, and he becomes poor. Yeah, and and had some kind of head treatment. Maybe he had a concussion or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for it's that gum. Yeah, it's the trick gum. The trick. It yeah. doesn't just make his mouth <laughs> oily. It uh, it also got into his brain. Yeah, it was it was slow acting. So um, basically, this movie is Pee Wee Herman. Now the show wasn't out yet, was it? Was the show out the Pee Wee's Playhouse? Uh, I believe so. Because a lot of the people that were on the show were in the movie. I'd have to, let me have to double check here. Uh, connections. Yes. Uh, Pee Wee's uh, Playhouse came out in 86, while this, oh, this came out in 85. So, no, I was wrong. <laughs> but, but. So basically, just the people from the movie went on to be on the show. Yeah. The, and, uh, and yeah, actually, 86 to 90. The character itself spawned from, I believe he was in, I believe Paul Rubens was in uh, UCB. And that's where the character started. And that, which spawned um, a, play, a play version, which uh, was on HBO for a little while back in the 80s. And which spawned the movie, which spawned the TV show, which spawned another stage version uh, just about, I don't know, a handful of years ago. Which is now spawning a new show or movie, actually. Uh, that's going to be on Netflix, that's which on is Netflix. the whole reason we're doing this. Which is the reason we're doing this. Because it debuted uh, a short while ago. Yes. And, uh, yeah, the, the stage show is, like, dirty, right? Uh, it's. I it, mean, it's, a, it's way more adult. Because wasn't the whole, wasn't the big ball of aluminum foil basically meth or something? I, I don't know about that. Uh, but it is more adult. Uh, there is a lot more adult humor in, in it. Obviously, with them going to uh, Saturday morning for the TV show, they had to make it more kid friendly, and especially. Oh, you don't say. Yeah. Well, especially when couldn't talk about a giant meth ball and then have after these messages. We'll be right back. Uh, but no, they. Uh, but at the time, the parental uh, there's like a parental. A group that was all about making Saturday morning TV like have more uh, things that are geared towards the kids learning 
And so, and so that's, that's why when you watch when you watch Pee Wee's Playhouse, you see you see some of that in there. So they had, because there was a requirement that they had to have so much time in there, uh, that that was geared towards kids learning. I I don't know what their exact requirements were, uh, but that's something else that when Weird Al had his own TV show, he had to abide by that rule too. So that's what, and and I was listening to a commentary on on one of the shows on that, and he's like, that's you know. While they were doing that, they were still pulling the wool over the eyes of the censors and getting a lot of stuff through for Weird Al show. But I don't know. Well, I would imagine it has to be extremely difficult writing children's anything just because of how careful you have to be with things. Yeah. Especially, I mean, I think it would be even harder nowadays. Like uh, Teen Titans Go. Yeah. That's a good. That's a funny cartoon. They find a way to still. I've never watched it. It's, I mean, it's not really that adult or edgy, but it's just, it's funny. Yeah. They have some episodes where they break the fourth wall and stuff that's funny. Um, so, anyways, this was actually co-written with Phil Hartman. Yes. Uh, and I th- and I believe, and he was in uh, UCB with uh, with Pee Wee as well, or Paul Rubens actually, and 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 he, um, Paul and uh, and Phil Hartman, they actually wrote a lot together. Uh, I'm pretty sure with the show as well too and with the broadway sh- show spe- especially um so this movie starts off with you meet peewee and it's kind of a glimpse into his uh life and he's actually you know what they refer to him as you know scientifically he'd be referred to as um no i don't know if this is this scientific uh it's latin excuse me the latin term is a uh, puer atamus which is eternal boy in Latin. Really? It's, uh, it's used in mythology to designate a child god who is forever young, psychologically. Older man whose emotional life has remained at an adolescent level. Because we were saying, like, yeah, if this, if this isn't Pee Wee Herman in his movie, he is just a creepy-ass neighbor. You don't let your kids ever go near his house. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, he's got the most tacky – he's got the tackiest house on the block. I mean, there was so much shit in that front yard. Oh, There's yeah. A, a huge rocket. Well, not only that, but you notice how his house is, like, bright red. Yeah. And it's even it even looks a little smaller. It almost looked like a fake house. Yeah. Kind well, it's of. bigger on the inside. And he has the whole uh, Rube Goldberg contraption mm-hmm. to make his breakfast. Uh, Most of which he doesn't even eat. It just uh, <laughs> it just sits there. Yeah, it's uh, pancakes are stuck to the ceiling. Yeah, and he pours Mr. T cereal yeah. all of that. Do you think that? Yeah, you know, do you think the? Uh, do you think they gave a spike to Mr. T cereal? I think after for, it came out, maybe for a couple of weeks. Yeah, because this movie did really well. Did it? Uh, only took cost seven million to make, and it made forty one domestic. Wow, I would not. That surprises me, especially yeah. since the show hadn't come out yet. So not a lot of people were. Yeah, it was kind of the introduction. Yeah, and uh, so. Pee Wee has this kooky, weird house, and he has a giant. Everything's giant: giant toothbrush, giant knife, giant yeah. fork. Just very much either, uh, just either a special needs adult <laughs> or a pedophile. Just one of the two is what that house looks like. It belongs. It looks like it either is uh, the innocence of a child, or there is some shit locked up in the basement you don't want to see. It's funny because uh, it, with the whole Rube uh, Goldberg. Uh, is it Goldberg? Goldberg, right? Okay, yeah. He was Jewish. Yeah, I was. Well, I say Goldberg, and I think of uh, Bill Goldberg, but, um, but he has to go through and reset that every day. If you think about it, yeah. yeah he's got to get a new candle. He's got to get a new wire to to run for, through the can- yeah for the candle to burn. It's like that takes a, that's a lot of time, a lot of effort, and then to just eat five five bites of cereal yeah. off the top of your breakfast. Um, and imagine, you know, I got to thinking too. No, since you know, since we had seen it before, I, I knew that you know he goes on this trip. But kind of felt bad for the dog, even though he ends up with Dottie for a little bit. You see that later, but it's like the dog is just by himself. He's stuck there with nobody to feed him, and start that contraption up. Well, no, no, they, that bowl is pretty big. I would say that'd be a good full daily. He's just leaving dumps around the house then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I've known people in life that <laughs> their dogs just, yeah dog just shit on the floor. Yeah, we'll clean it up later. Um, so they uh, so then Pee Wee goes off on his bike and he comes across disgusting ass Francis. Francis, 
with his weird cheeks and his weird way of talking that's just disgusting every time he talks. Well, this was the beginning of the start of uh, some of the some of the memorable lines from the movie. Where uh, I know you are, but what am I? Oh yeah, that, that whole rundown. God, man, <laughs> that was that generation's get her done. Yeah, yeah, that was so bad. I remember. I know you are, but what am I? Just constant because I was I was in like grades. I was in that age group that it was targeted at. Yeah, we, uh, I, I have to admit, we said it a lot too. And we're a little. I, I didn't think it was an expression guys in their forties would have used back in eighty five. Well, you know, we thought it was funny. You know, when when you were drinking as much as we were at that time, you know, <laughs> it, it tends. Yeah, to it was just time. it was an awful over repeated joke. Yeah, and uh, and Francis just man that just like I said the whole character is just ah uh, it's just chunk grown up chunk. Yeah. From Goonies. Just gross <laughs> every time he talks. Looks like he's always got something in his mouth when I'm he speaks. I'm surprised he wasn't carrying, like, a, a sandwich in his hand. Yeah. It look, looks like he, oh, <laughs> look like he sounded like this. <laughs> and just, yeah. Oh, and, let me finish his bite. Whether, whether he's uh, chasing leprechauns or uh, eating cake outside of uh, <laughs> uh, a new a new kid moving into the block. <laughs> no retreat, no surrender call back there. Yep. Um, so then Francis... Tells him that uh, for his – Francis is rich. Yeah. Spoiled. Like Spoiled. Yeah, like we said, this is uh, – this is uh, this is France, this dude from Leprechaun with money. And so he says for all he wants for his birthday, what he told his dad was uh, Pee-wee's bike. And Pee-wee says uh, he wouldn't sell it for a million, kajillion, bajillion, whatever dollars. Yeah, come on, dude. You ain't got no job. Huh? You don't have a job. He's, he's gonna need the money. Yeah, well, that just that and that bike. Come on, man, that bike's worth eighty five, ninety bucks. Yeah, you know, take take what you can get for it. But yeah. he doesn't. He can't be that special. Well, I mean, it, apparently to him it was because he has that whole bullshit where he has to put in the code and yeah. the pumpkin and the, lights up. Yeah, and there and there's lights that are shining on it. It's you know, but you got to think too. When the door was closed, those lights were still on. Yeah. So it's like those lights are constantly on. There. Yeah, it's, that's probably, yeah, that bike's costing you yeah. more. Yeah, um, that's a lot and, of electricity. And so Pee Wee tells him no, and he, he rides away, off to, offers a day of uh, going into a magic store where apparently he doesn't have to pay for shit. Uh, yeah. They just give him a bag and say, go ahead. Yeah. Um, which the other thing is like, yeah, he's that dude. What does he do for money? We never we never heard of him talk about a job. You never saw him do anything. Just Which is why it would have been good for him to sell to, to uh, sell, sell the bike. The bike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there there is a a uh, theory on on how he made his money, and that was selling Rube Goldberg ideas. Oh, really? Yeah. Apparently, um, according to one my, uh, according to one of my sources. What what source is this? I, I can't reveal that. That's. Uh, I have to because when you told me about this beforehand, mm -hmm. and you said make sure you bring that up, I assumed it was going to be something interesting or funny. Yeah, he sold Rube Goldberg's, huh? Yeah, Rube and Goldberg, that's your uh, ideas. Yeah, that is your protected sources information. Yeah, um, I was thought it was going to be more something of like I don't know, like maybe he was in an accident, insurance settlement. Could yeah. Maybe maybe that's why he's in that state of childhood. Because look at how shitty that Rube Goldberg was. Anyways, pancakes were hitting the ceiling. Yeah, he, yeah, he really needs to work on that. Yeah, well, I guess maybe that's uh, it. All came together at the end. But anyways, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you for that wonderful contribution. Hey, I'm glad I'm glad I could be here. For yeah, you. glad you're uh, glad you're glad you're here to bring that that thunder, that amazing uh, knowledge. <laughs> I gotta contribute something. So, uh, so Pee Wee goes in after the magic shop. After he leaves the magic shop, where uh, the character I identified with, the woman just looking at him like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, that was totally you. I could, that was I yeah. Could, I, I could totally see you being like staring at him. What the hell? And he and then so he uh, he leaves. But there there was one adult related joke in there too. If we, if we want to go, you know, when we were talking about there being uh, adult jokes in the pl in play version. Oh, there's a few. Where he puts on the x-ray glasses and looks at her and just kind of like. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, and I actually kind of missed that when it was going on. And we should talk about, actually, we should talk about before he goes in there, uh, 
what he does with his bike. Yeah, he, he uh, chains it up to a very creepy clown, which when I was a kid was one of the things that always creeped me out. Well, Not at that point. That whole scene, I think, is, is memorable because seeing him do the chain. And just keep pulling it out. Yeah, like it clicks something in your head and it just reminds you of being a little kid. Seeing that. Yeah. And then seeing him put it around the clown and everything. And yeah. the, you're right, the clown, just the way it looks and everything else. Yeah, that. What, it's not until it gets stolen that's when it got creepy because of the music uh, mm-hmm. and, and, the, and the laughing. That As a kid, that that always creeped me out. Also. It was like, yeah. Ugh. So I guess we can go ahead and get to that. Yeah. He leaves the... Uh, he le- he le- well, he leaves the magic store and he goes to the bike store to pick up his, uh, his, his, horn. his horn. And uh, Dottie... Um, wow. Played by uh, Elizabeth Daly. Yep. Uh, who's yeah? She's pretty hot. Yeah. She's still pretty hot. Yeah. I she's a, in Rice, man. Yeah. I had a crush on her. When she's I Chucky or Tommy Pickles. Excuse uh, me. Yeah. She's Tommy from the Rugrats. Yep. Uh, she's in the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, a lot of uh, voice work. Yeah, she does a lot of voiceover now. She uh, has a has her own band, <sighs> a rock band. Oh, she's divorced. <laughs> She uh, she oh, was in Devil, she was one of the prostitutes in Devil's Rejects. Uh, she knew all the prostitutes. In my room might know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, she's hot. She's uh, she plays the bike store person. Yeah, personnel, I guess. And who word. who has a for some reason has a huge crush on Pee Wee. Yeah. Who doesn't uh, reciprocate? Uh, but no, fe- it's not one of those things where he's just oblivious to yeah. it or naive. He actually is aware. And it's so funny because if you if you don't know, if maybe, you know, because I don't think this is as much common knowledge as it used to be. Uh, Paul Rubens, the man who plays Pee Wee Herbin, her, her, what is it, Herbin? Herbin? Herbin, Pee Wee Herbin. Um, Where's the turban? Has a little bit of controversy in his past. Uh, there was. Well, um, that that was after this. That was after this. But the way he just. No. Desc- I know what you're going. Yeah. I know what you're so going hold on. For. So don't, don't, right. don't fucking don't right. you I, dare. All right. Tread, tread carefully, my friend. All right. So, Paul Rubens in 91 was in Florida visiting some relatives, and he was caught masturbating at an adult theater, which kind of pissed me off. So I'm like, dude, I mean, what what, what do you who, what, what do you think guys are doing in there? If they're, if they're going to go watch porn in public, I'm guessing they have no problem with jerking off in public. So, they arrested a number of guys, and then... Um, which I got to say, too, you know, it's like... Why were the why would the cops just automatically just go in there? I mean, that would have to be a daily ba- daily thing because that's constantly going on. It's like, oh, time to go, uh, time to go risk some. Quote, he unquote, actually perbs. tried to get out of it by telling the cops that he would that he's Pee Wee Herman and he would do a children's benefit for the sheriff's office. And then a local reporter saw his name and his <clears throat> and Ruben's attorney made the same offer to the uh, to the reporter to withhold the story. Yeah. You know, just just thinking about that, I don't see how that could work. And then, yeah, they stopped airing the reruns of Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah. Um, the toys got removed from the store. I used to have all the toys. I've got one upstairs. Like the whole set? No. Uh, well, when my daughter was probably about five years old, we introduced her to Pee Wee's Playhouse. And we've got every episode on DVD. We had to go. I think we got them online. Bought them online. Bought the Christmas episode, and so she watched those all the time. And she wanted to have a Pee Wee uh, birthday birthday party. We're like, oh, how the fuck are we gonna do that, right? So after looking on eBay, we found Pee Wee Herman napkins and cups. We bought it. She had she had the Pee Wee uh, birthday. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and we and we actually bought a doll that's probably about twelve inches tall, and it's got the string in the back. And uh, when you pull it, it talks. But she's also she also had some of the uh, some of the smaller characters too, like Cherry and uh, the pterodactyl, and I think she may have Jambi too. We still got it; it's probably in storage right now. But but yeah, they had those, they had toys out too at the time. Man, is he is he a creepy guy? Who Paul? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, because uh, you do are you are aware that in um, in two thousand and two they searched they searched his uh, home and everything for child pornography. I hadn't heard that. Um, 
Kelly Bush Rubin's PR at the time said the description of the items was inaccurate, claimed the objects were Rob, were, were uh, Rob Lowe's sex tape and a few 30 to 100 year old Keech collectible images. Okay, wait. Now, hang on. Um, it was charged with possession of obscene material and properly depicting a child under the age of 18 in sexual conduct. Um, I hadn't heard anything about this. Okay, so they so in March 2004, child pornography charges were dropped in exchange for Ruben's guilty plea to a lesser charge. He is uh, – Ruben's later stated he was a collector of erotica, including films, muscle magazines, and sizable collection of mostly homosexual vintage erotica, such as photograph studies of teen nudes. Is that – are you reading off Wikipedia? Just yeah. out of curiosity. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Because anybody can edit that. Yeah, I'm not but, saying I'm not saying it didn't happen. I know, I know, but but that argument's kind of stale at this point. Who's sitting there going around and going, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fuck up Paul Rubens. Well, they do. People have before. Okay, well, but not just his. I mean, I'm I guessing. I, I'll get, I'm guessing these are the majority of the facts. Okay, well, either, if, if we're not, if we're misrepresenting him, it's okay. So maybe it sounds like he had some artistic yeah. stuff that involved teens. Is yeah. what it sounds not, like. I mean, I'm not. I'm not condoning anything. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying. So. That. But off, I've gotten way off topic. Yeah, we, the yeah, reason is the re- so he got caught jerking off in a theater. Yes, yeah, so let's get back to that. Because not this, that I really want to get back to that. The, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's dig deep. Let's clarify. That. We've got the video. Um, no. Okay. Um, so he get so then in the movie, Dottie, yes, the hot bicycle girl, wow. is uh is trying to uh, convince him to go to a drive-in go with to the her. Drive-in with him. Basically, didn't it sound like she was like, fuck me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't that what a drive-in was for back in those days? Yeah. I, I would have had her in the back room by the time the conversation oh, God, was over. It sounds so douchey when you heard her, <laughs> I had her in the back room. We right, bro? Yeah, we would have. Uh, we just would have talked. So she, she, uh, so, so he says to her, though. Uh, he says, I'm a loner. Well, no, that I'm into weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, Stuff yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah. imagine. And this, with with what you know about him, then you're just like, oh my, it's just so funny. Yeah, it was the, it was that moment that Brad and I just looked at each other and go, oh shit. Yeah, that's just, kind of weird. But but at the same time, though, you know, all that aside, just the fact that he doesn't, uh, he he says you would, he's like, I don't know, there was something in that he said um, that. About him being a loner and stuff that he's like you wouldn't understand. No, no, here it is. Oh, you got it? There's a lot of things about me you don't know anything about, Dottie. Things you wouldn't understand. Things you couldn't understand. Things you shouldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny when you know that he likes to jerk off in theaters. Yeah, well, my my first thought when he said it was that um, basically the character's asexual. But then putting real life into it, it's like... Yeah, that's a little weird. A sexual pervert. That's what he is. There you go. Um, so uh, so then he, he walks out of the bike store after rejecting Dottie, and um, the bike is gone. <gasps> and like you just already spoiled, uh, the big clown scene, the scary clown. Yes. Um, and so he goes on a pursuit, and then the rest of the movie is just him on a pursuit for this bike. And he comes across... Crazy characters. Well, he, well, first, first he goes to, to the, the psychic. Fort, he goes to the fortune teller, who uh, makes up a complete bullshit. Madam story. Ruby. She get, makes up a complete bullshit story about it being in the uh, basement of the Alamo. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "That's where I got to go." So he uh, I'm trying to think how how he starts out because oh, he's hitchhiking and gets a hit. He gets a ride from an escaped convict, mm-hmm. and uh, and they're coming up on on the and- cops. Yeah, they're coming up on the comps. <laughs> it's so he's so like, wait, ridiculous. he's got, I've got an idea, and next, uh, and it cuts to the next shot, and he's wearing a wig. Uh, the 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 convict has a fake goatee. He and looked glasses. like olive oil. Yeah, a from bit. Popeye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a dress on and a sweater, mm-hmm. and I told Brad it was convenient that he had all that stuff in his bag. Yeah, his little his little hobo sack. Yeah, his hobo sack because. And it was worse as the cop hits on him. Yeah, he's like, "Get! Why don't you get out of the, get out of the car for me for a minute so I can check check out that pretty dress you got on?" So there he's been hit on for a second time in this think, movie. Do you think he was intentionally? Um, do you think he was intentionally like laying on the dude who was the actor playing the fugitive? 
Because he kept doing that whole scene where he just had his head in his lap. Well, I think I think that was to cover up. Uh, oh, the, the handcuffs. Because yeah, okay, hand I thought Paul Rubens was just being a creeper. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they so they get past the cops, and uh, and, and uh, they they get they get to talk, and he's like, "What's jail like?" Blah blah blah, uh, and then. It, it, then it cuts to nighttime where Pee Wee's now driving, which I had no idea that Pee Wee had a driver's license, much, le- much less knew how to drive a car since he drives a bike. Well, before. the other guy's a fugitive. Right. I don't think, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't think they're really worried about. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Dude, this might be illegal. Yeah. You don't have a license. Does this insurance of this car I stole cover that? <laughs> um, and then they end up driving off a cliff. Uh, and fortunately, it was a convertible, and they used the convertible top to uh, help them parachute <laughs> down to the bottom. And then Mickey kicks him out. And he kicks him out, and he takes off. And and, and the uh, the glasses that he had gotten, uh, goggles, whatever, the light goggles he got from the magic shop end up coming in handy because he puts them yeah. on so he can see. And then it turns out he's uh, around a, a bunch of animals, and, and he ends up getting picked up by uh, M- Large Marge. Which is which was the scene that creeped me out as a kid when she does the yeah. claymation face. Yeah, that was uh, again. That's referring back to to the Tim Burton thing. That's one of you know his things as we've seen in his later movies. But yeah, that creeped me. That's another one of those. And things I just I don't too. know. I guess I just didn't totally get the point of that because then he gets to the to the place that she, she tells him. I know she's a ghost. I, why is she a ghost? What well, else does that play in this movie? Anything, does anything in this movie make sense? No, I guess not. I yeah. guess not. Yeah. yeah, it's just weird because, like, then he gets in there and he's like, Large Marge sent me. And they're like, she's been dead. And yeah. then, the, like, I guess that wasn't as, even as much the weird part. It was just how after they had that revelation that a ghost had just given him a ride. Yeah. They just went to, back to socializing. And he's just sitting there at the bar. Yeah, and, and they actually make him pay for his food, which... You know, it, all it was was tuna sandwich. So you would think that there was like, yeah, that's on us. You know, you've been through. You've just, you just got a ride from a ghost. From a ghost. From a dead woman. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they it's said he does dishes. Because he doesn't have any money. Very cliche. Or he lost his wallet, actually. Yeah. Um, the psychic took it. Oh, that's right. That's why he didn't have mm-hmm. it. I didn't think about that. Um, Did we say where she told him the bike was? Yes. Bottom of the alley. Basement, basement of the alley. Uh, to backtrack just a second. Um, the 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 gang member that tried to to accost him in the alleyway on his way to the fortune teller, Tim Burton. Huh. Yes. Uh, and another cameo. Now now we'll go back to uh, the little uh, diner. Um, one of the guys in the diner is Tom Berenger. Hmm. Yeah. So probably should have led with that one and followed with Tim Burton. Nah, that's all right. I'm getting back to that. So anyway, he uh, after doing dishes. He uh, the the counter Simone, Simone, who is um, Simone's the waitress. She's the, the waitress, and the she tells him that her dream is to go to Paris. Yeah, this not not very big dreamer. No, 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 not at all. And she is a very different type of lady. Did did, did you not get a weird feeling from this lady? She's kind of like she's a, she's a future cat lady. Yeah, she could be. Yeah, it's just her whole disposition is kind of odd to me. Um, but she's like. Hey, why don't you come and watch the sunrise with me? So they end up walking out to a huge dinosaur, and they sit in that. In the mouth of the dinosaur. Yeah, in the and mouth she of dinosaur. tells him about her extremely jealous boyfriend. Now, those dinosaurs, those are that's an actual location. But guess where it's at? California. Not, at, not even anywhere in Texas. Oh, yeah. So... So, yeah, I mean, because we know in the end of the movie, he ends up at uh, Warner Brothers, which is in California. So he goes to Texas to go back to California. It's kind of <laughs> funny when you think about it. Uh, but uh, but she mentions while they're up there uh, that her boyfriend, uh, she has issues with her boyfriend or whatever. And then we see who her boyfriend is. This weird, oddly shaped man. Very tall with a very huge gut. Yeah. And she and he just he. he Weird thing is, he sees him go into the dinosaur. Yeah. But then he waits until morning, just standing outside, listening yeah. to them talk. And, of course, everything they say can sound like a sexual innuendo. Which, when I was a kid watching this, obviously, it doesn't register with me that the, the innuendo is there. Mm-hmm. But watching it tonight, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, That's tell me so about obvious. your big butt. Yeah, he said, tell me about your big butt. And something about being inside <laughs> yeah. or something. So, yeah, and then... So yeah, again, well, he just he waits it out. Yeah, because 
they they cut to him hearing that, and it's dark outside. But when they when uh, but then a little bit later they come out, and it's bright, sunny out, and then he attacks him. So yeah, if he was, he was that for. jealous, he would have gone in as soon as he heard the butt talk. Yeah, and then it's yeah, no, and then, probably even before that when he saw him go up there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, so he chases them around. Um, and Pee-wee jumps on a train. Which just conveniently uh, driving by. Mm-hmm. And uh, he meets the hobo who keeps singing. And, and the dude who's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, the, the hobo sings so much it actually annoys, uh, annoys Pee-wee. Which, um, considering the way Pee-wee acts, is kind of funny. Now the roles are reversed. And it's somebody being annoyed by... Or Pee Wee being annoyed by somebody else instead of somebody else being annoyed by Pee Wee. Yeah, that hobo guy, he was in The Wedding Singer. Wait. Was, was Wayne's World. Who was he in The Wedding Singer? Was he the. Uh, I think I know. I think he ended up in Steve Buscemi's band at the end. I, I, I have a feeling I, I'm not. Uh, he's not listed it is, on it the cast, so it must not have been very important. Uh, okay. Um. But yeah, he does have he did he did look familiar when you saw him on as the hobo in this movie. Yeah. And there, yeah, he see, he annoys Pee Wee, so then Pee Wee so eventually just he just jumps off, barrel rolls off. Yeah, leaves his leaves his bag, and uh, ends up right in front of a sign that says uh, home the, the Alamo. Alamo. Yeah, and so he goes into the Alamo uh, tour with uh, presented by Jan Hooks, formerly of Saturday Night Live, formerly uh, very Saturday funny, Live. very funny lady. Yes, she was. No longer with Do us. your thing. R.I.P. Yeah, gosh, so douchey. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised we didn't start off this episode with Corey's five-minute tribute as to what Jan Hooks has meant. And somebody else that we'll talk about later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so, so he has to he has to go around with this uh, with this tour guide the entire time until she finishes, so he can ask her a question. And he asks if uh, they when do they get to see the basement. And then everybody laughs. They laugh at him. And a kid takes a picture of him. Yep. And then he... Uh, he runs off. Well, he... Yeah. And he... He's uh, he's going to a bus stop, right? Yeah. He ends up at the bus stop and runs into uh, Simone. Yeah. The waitress. Who, who says, I'm going to live my dream. I'm going to go to Paris. Yeah, by taking a bus. Yeah, I'm not real sure how that's going to work out. Maybe she's taking the bus to the, to the airport. airport. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, so and so he get he gets so inspired. Leaves. Yeah, and he decides to go get a bus ticket home so he can start looking for his bike back there. And he runs into Andy again, who chases him around. And a- Andy he, being Simone's boyfriend. Yes, and, now formally boyfriend. Yeah, and so they. Uh, so he chases him around again, and somehow there's a nearby rodeo. Well, he he ducks into one of the trailers of the rodeo cowboy. Right. Puts on a ga- an outfit. But, but that's what I'm saying. The rodeo is right next to the bus station. Oh yeah. Literally. And, and uh, well, convenient. Yeah. Uh, and they they uh, he, he he hides in a trailer and ends up putting on a costume. Yeah, and it has a number. And so they just see the number and they grab him and throw him on a bull. He he sets a world record. Yeah. And then gets thrown off. And then Andy somehow recognizes him. Yeah. Out there laying down. And not only that, he had uh, his face was, uh, mostly covered up by by a bandana too. Yeah. So how, Although I guess maybe it was the voice. Ew, ew, yeah. Ew. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so Andy uh, chases after him, but uh, doesn't realize he's wearing red. And Pee Wee. Uh, Pee Wee takes off one way, and a bull comes and chases uh, Andy off. We never see him again. Yeah. Well, they take they take Pee Wee off, right? Yeah, they drag him off. That's right. And then they ask him, uh, "Do you know your name?" No. I, oh yeah, he says I don't remember. Do you know where you uh, or do you know uh, do you know uh, where you from? I don't remember. Uh, well, what do you remember? What is, I think he says my bike. I can't remember now. No. I remember the Alamo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit, how did I forget that? Damn God it. damn, man. Dun, 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 man. We were even, we were, we were like, we were literally setting that up. What did you think we were? I forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot the win. Let's do it again. Why do you think Take when two. I said, I remember, uh, remember, yeah. that's what yeah. I told you, the remember. <laughs> no, there's no doing it again. The I, moment is gone. I remember the Alamo. So um, after that, 
he goes into a biker bar to use the phone, um, but the Satan's helpers. Oh wait, we did forget one part when he's back at the at the bus station. He's t- he calls Dottie, and he, he she asks where he's at, and he says uh, that he's in Texas. He's just like, nah, and he's like, uh uh-huh, watch. And he oh, steps yeah. out. Uh, the stars and are, night are, are big, big and bright, and then everybody says, "Deep in the heart of Texas." And I, that was one of the things as a kid we would always we would always do. We always thought that was really funny. Um, so then he goes into the biker bar, and uh, they the the Satan's helpers kick him out for trying to use their phone because it's a club. It's a clubhouse. It's a secret clubhouse. And then he accidentally knocks over all the motorcycles and gets dragged back in. Dragged back in, and before they before uh, they want to all kill him. They they all name ways to kill him. Yeah, and then uh, Elvira. Is about to uh, Cassandra Peterson. Is that her real name? That's her real name. Yeah, she's uh, she's about to, uh, you know, she's she's about to. She's, was she wasn't a fucking. Was that what she was referring to? I don't know. Let me have him first. Yeah, I'm not real sure what what they were going to imply there. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me that that was what they were implying. But he said, "Don't I get one last uh, request?" And his request was to to be able to dance to the song Tequila. Tequila. Which, if you don't know, it's uh, well. Everybody knows that song. Everybody knows that song. Uh, so he goes, he puts it on the jukebox, and he gets some uh, he gets some, na, 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 na. some shoes from uh, the cook. Sorry. Okay. Tequila. There we go. <laughs> So anyhow, he uh, while the song's playing, he gets up on a, on a table and starts to do the to do the pee wee dance, which everybody knows. Everybody was doing it when this movie came out. People still do it when the song almost is as popular as the Urkel dance. Yeah, pretty the much. I mean, you could go seriously. They'll play it sometimes at baseball games, and if you look around, there will be somebody doing that dance. Uh. Usually, it's me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> probably wearing a sweater vest. Yeah, probably. while you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, but he entertain he entertains them so much that uh, they decide not to kill him. They even give him a bike. Yeah, gave him a motorcycle, which you don't motorcycle gangs typically don't do. Yeah, especially since that bike was probably already somebody else's. Yeah, and he starts to take off, but drives into a sign. Yeah, well, the His, stunt guy, the stunt guy, like all of a sudden, Pee Wee is six four. Yeah, and one hundred eighty pounds, and has a very different uh, style haircut from the back. Yeah. And he uh, he takes off and he runs into a sign. So they take so, him to the hospital mm, where he has a where he has a, a nightmare, a nightmare of clowns. Which that was a creepy ass scene. Yeah, and it's very. I mean, you, again, this is another one of those uh, scenes where you can really tell if you didn't know who directed this movie, you see that oh, that's really Tim Burton esque because mm-hmm. because um, if you watch some of the later movies, you you see that type of stuff in there, even in Beetlejuice. I, you know, there's a lot, I, th- I can see a lot of it in Beetlejuice as well. Yeah. Um, so he wakes up from, from the nightmare and it sees on TV that uh, there's a boy that's an actor who gets a bike. It's the brother from the Wonder Years. It's Jason Hervey from the Wonder Years. And uh, so now he knows where it's at. So, he ha- so his new mission is to head to uh, Warner Brothers Studio. Where he just, they, they just are like, well, we're not going to, it must have been boring. Like he must have just gotten on a bus politely yeah and just gone not met any crazy care this is the one stretch from san antonio to burbank is where he doesn't meet any crazy characters along the way yeah and I, that's not like a, it's not like a couple hours right yeah i think no no way i mean that's that's not only is that probably a couple days uh drive i would i would imagine but uh it would take some money too I mean, we've already established he's got no money. I'm not even sure how he got there, but maybe that's maybe that's uh, another movie they could do. His trip from San Antonio to Burbank. From San Antonio to Burbank, it is one thousand three hundred and sixty-three miles. There's that is nineteen and a half hours driving. Yeah, and it and he's there the next day. Yeah, uh, 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 you know, you would uh, you would assume it was the next day. Um, so he's going around looking for. Uh, for whatever, uh, where, wherever this kid's at, wherever the bike would be, uh, he asked one guy in a in a uh, mask where he's at, and he he says he's not sure, but it says in a really high pitched voice, which 
Brad and I couldn't figure out why. What was the point of him having a high pitched voice? And then the woman he asks has a low pitched voice. Yeah, it yeah. was a weird just joke. Yeah, I didn't get it. Um, but the guy with the high pitched voice, it turns out, was uh, the actor who played Jambi in uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Mm. So, so, and and I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but there's a lot of people from play the Playhouse that's in this, but as different characters, and that was you know one of them. Yeah, remember we established that right up front because then you were like, yeah, because the show came out. Well, whatever. First. So anyhow, he ends up finding the right place, the right, the right, uh, the, the right uh, soundstage that they're on, and so he dresses up as a nun because there's some nuns that are interacting with with the actor and are right next to the bike. So he dresses up as a nun. What the the nun that hugs Jason Harvey's character? That was Miss Yvonne from the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, see. So, um, so he gives – in that movie, the boy, Jason Harvey, gives the bike to the nuns. He wants to give back because he got his parents, so he wants to give back something back. So he gives, gives them the bike. So Pee Wee, finally sensing the opportunity, jumps on the bike and says, thanks, I'm going to go do a paper route and takes off on the bike. And then the guards chase the, him. The guards chase him all over, all over the Warner Brothers lot. And he uses his little bat gadgets. Yes. Uh, oil slicks and all types of fancy trickery. Disposable and, handles. Uh, handles. And then uh, almost runs into D. Snyder sh- when they're shooting their video. Yeah. And then and and goes across a movie set. The goes Godzilla a, set. Goes across several Christmas movies, set. Christmas set. He swings on a vine, which is probably – that's uh, 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 an infamous shot where he's got to hold the vine and the bi- he's still on the bike but yeah. going across a pond or a lake or whatever. And then he gets out of the studio, and he discovers a burning pet shop. And he saves – it's, it's, it's so convenient. Everything is just right there, just right along. You know, I, I think it's funny. I mean, in a movie like this, you can't take anything seriously. Yeah. So, you you know, you have to su- suspend your uh, disbelief. But, uh, but yeah, he saves all these all these pets, and they say, this man's a hero. And then the policeman says, well, he's also in trouble. And they show him. They end up cutting to them showing footage of him ruining all these different movies. And, uh, and uh, who was it? Oh, the uh, the the head of Warner Brothers says your story would make an excellent movie. Yeah, and they dismiss all the charges. Dottie and, shows up with the bike, mm-hmm. and uh, and then they go to a drive-in theater, which was a scene that was about five minutes too long. <laughs> they literally showed way too much of that fake movie. Um, which there's a lot if, if you notice. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of callbacks from earlier in the movie mm-hmm. when he was in the magic shop. Um, there was there was a there was a James Bond reference in the magic shop, and then you cut to this, and the p- character playing Pee Wee is actually a James Bond type character who, if you listen closely, the music, uh, the music cue in that movie is very James Bondish, and he's dressed like Pee Wee, but he fights like James Bond. Um, so there's there's a callback for that. Um, Oh, we didn't mention too when he's run when he's riding his bike throughout the Warner Brothers lot. The music is very Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz. Uh, sound. Yeah, the dun 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 dun. Yeah, it's yeah, it like a remix of that. Yeah, it's like they didn't they they couldn't use it. and and Wizard of Oz is a Warner Brothers movie. Oh, so they probably could use it they then, probably, right? Yeah, I mean, they, I'm sure they could have used it, but they they altered it a little. Well, bit. yeah, they didn't want it to probably be the exact same. Yeah, which is you know also a callback to the you know the bike riding scene in Wizard of Oz, in case you know didn't put two and two together. But going back to the to uh, the drive-in movie, uh, he's he's giving out food. You didn't think they could have put that? You didn't think they could have done the math on that one? Uh, didn't trust the listeners to do the math. I was hoping you kind of uh, overlooked that and let me go on. Uh, so, okay, so they, the funniest line, though, I thought, of the whole movie is when he's going around giving people the snacks and he sees and Simone. It's a, and it's everybody, but it's everybody. Everybody that he met along the way, basically. Yeah. I don't know how he found the hobo. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a, what do they call it, a, a curtain call. Yeah. And uh, he gets to Simone, who has found her French beer beau. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how he found her either, but w- whatever. And she's, she, you know, she she says some stuff in French, and yeah. he just, <laughs> 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 yeah, so funny. 
Just complete dismissal. He, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to say uh, talk. In just French. complete dismissive of the language. This yeah. is great. Um, yeah, and then that's the. Uh, but oh, he. Did, but hold on. Uh, uh, Mickey was there. Yeah, he was in a prison bus. Yeah, he's in a prison and bus. And he gives him the hot, the extra long hot dog with a giant with a, uh, a file file in it. So, so not only, uh, not only did Pee Wee, you know, break a bunch of uh, rules. He also tried to help an inmate escape. escape felon. Yeah, yeah, who'd already escaped once. Yeah, um, which because you know they always just let. Oh, this prisoner knows a guy who is in a movie, and he's going to have a character based on him. Oh, yeah, we'll just take the bus. Yeah, he can lean out the side. We'll yeah. put a speaker up there for him. Yeah, it's no problem. Well, he can go to the he can go to this premiere, which I thought was funny that the premiere was at a drive-in and not mm-hmm. an actual movie theater because it's supposed to be a big. Although it was eighty-five. Yeah. Um, and so then he. But you do to- see you 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 see scenes from the movie as well too, and you see Pee Wee's scene, and. His acting is so bad, at least his voice is so bad, that they overdub it with somebody else, which, again, as a kid, that was something I always loved and something that uh, even to this day, every now and then, I may say, Mr. Herman, Beijing Mr. Herman, you have a telephone call. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good scene. Yeah. but uh, so, so as he's getting to Dottie, who is one of the last people he sees, um, they show one scene where uh, his movie version and the Dottie version are – or talking after he calls him up to, that he's got a telephone call and Pee Wee's just standing in the background and at one point tries to slide a little bit out of camera and then, but then so, just slides, and then back, slides in. back into camera and the whole time is just staring at them watching and it's so it's so funny just to watch him I don't even know what was said between the two of them because I was watching Pee Wee the entire time it's just so funny because that's just um the way he was reacting is just so obvious that he has no idea what to do on a movie set. If if you know if it's the first time you've ever been on a movie set, you don't know what to do. He even looks at the camera a couple times too, like a novice uh, actor or extra would do. It's just it, it's so funny. Yeah, and it, and then Francis walks up, um, and with the press. Because yeah. the press is just following Francis around. Nobody's followed Pee Wee, but they're all following Francis. For some reason, the press wants to follow Francis. And he. Uh, and he, here we have another cameo. It's Phil oh, Hartman. yeah, Kevin Hart. For Phil Hartman. Excuse Kevin me. Hart. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hartman. Yeah. Uh, Phil Hartman, who, uh, who, as we know on, on Pee Wee's Playhouse, was. Um, what was his name? Ke- uh, 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 Captain. Fuck off. I forgot. Captain his name. Carl. Captain Carl. There we go. Um, yeah, and he. Uh, he wants to sit on the bike. Yeah, Francis wants to sit on the bike and have a picture taken. So Pee Wee agrees, and Francis sits on there and hits an ejector seat, and he goes flying. And then Pee Wee uh, tell asks <laughs> Dottie to uh, to go on a bike ride with him, and she says, "But don't you want to watch the end of the movie?" I don't need to watch the end of the movie. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone 47 minutes into this. That's the first time. That's the first time we've done the last. So, yeah, that's and that's the end of the movie. That's where it uh, That's where it ends. Again, I thought that last scene was a few minutes too long, a little too much. I, I, think, I think they would have been good just showing that scene with him in it up front, like right after the very beginning part. Yeah. Take out the ninja scene and everything else. Just put in the scene where he's... You know, the, the lobby worker, because that was funny. And then they, they, then you're done. Then you do the whole walk by. It was yeah. Just, yeah, it just felt really like, because I said, this was an hour and a half. Same as Street Fighter. Street Fighter to me felt like it went by a lot faster. I was getting tired at the end of this movie. Yeah, you almost fell asleep. Yeah, it's, so we'll, uh, we'll come back. We're going to get you some commercials here. Um, and, uh, oh, Vic, what did you have to say about the film? Still didn't like it, huh? I don't know if he didn't like it or us, but uh, Vic will hopefully give us his thoughts when we come back. Uh, we're going to give you some commercials, and uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you here in a few. We'll be right back. It's commercial time. <clears throat> you know what? This week, let's start with uh, Vic. Vic, where can the people find you at? Ha, just kidding. Corey, go ahead. <laughs> All right, you can find me on Twitter at NKOGonzo. All right, Vic, go ahead. 
No, nah, I'm just kidding with you. Uh, you can find me at bradscottcomedy.com. Uh, also, all social media is now Brad Scott Comedy as well to make everything easier for you. And uh, Vic, go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Showdown is on at The Showdown Pod on Twitter and the Facebook page, The Showdown Podcast. Click like somebody should. All right, Vic. I think he's still mad. All right, let's get back to the show. Really think back. we'd get this episode out without including that song, right? Oh, it had to, right? I mean, it's kind of the. Uh, is this where? Does this where the song became really famous, or was the song really famous before that? I don't know. Yeah, let's see, this was '85. Let's see when that song came out. Oh, that's from '58. I would so say this, this song, song was probably, was probably popular first. Yeah, it's probably around. But is it real? Is, is the dialogue really tequila? tequila? Yep, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, and is yeah, is, is that the most iconic scene from the movie? You think? Yeah. This and the dancing. Yeah, I think the dancing, and and like I said, the the swinging on the vine, because I, I see that a lot in like clips in, in movie clip uh, uh, things on TV and, and stuff. I think those are probably the two iconic ones or iconic scenes. I'm not sure if there'd be anything else really. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, so, uh. Let's let's get to the uh, the meat, the meat and potatoes, the meat of the Survivor Series. Um, for you, sir, is it a Survivor? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It really, it, I think it still holds up. Um, there's still parts that I laughed at. There's still parts that uh, I was saying the dialogue to, albeit sometimes uh, louder than normal. Um, and um, yeah, I think it really does. I mean, there's really no there's no timely jokes in it. So uh, unlike some unlike some comedies where it's, what do you mean by timely jokes? Well, if you go back, like if you were to watch Austin Powers now, there's a lot of jokes in there. Topical, topical. I think that's what you were looking well, for. Yeah, well, something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there are jokes that every joke holds up. It is. It doesn't have anything to do with what was going on. Well, let's slow down. Every joke. Okay, not every joke. holds up. Uh, so yeah, so it, it, this is this this one still holds up for me. So it is a survivor for you. Yes, it is. No. Really? Not a survivor for me. Uh, I liked it as a kid, but watching it as an adult, I almost fell asleep. And it wasn't like I was that tired, you know. I mean, I I haven't done much today, so I was, you know, I was pretty – but it it did – it wore me out a little bit because it felt so long. And not all of the – there was a handful of times that I laughed, but – yeah, I mean, it was more just nostalgic, but I, I mean, it wasn't like, I don't know, it just it wasn't it, it didn't give me an, I guess enough nostalgia to to see past the you know to see out how outdated it was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there are there are some stuff that's just like okay, that was kind of weird. I'm not saying it's a bad movie, right? But as far as is it, as far as being a survivor, is it what I thought it was when I initially watched it? No, yeah. I I did not like it nearly as much. So for me, it's it's not a survivor. Okay. It's not like when I watched Street Fighter, I was still just as entertained as when I watched it when I was a kid. When I watched Clueless, I laughed just like I did when I saw it as a kid. With this movie, I did not laugh anywhere near like I did when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, it comes down to Vic. Vic, Vic what did you think? Breaker. You know, you are being a real asshole this episode. A bit of a cunt. Yeah, I mean, we, how how are we supposed to do the Showdown podcast presents the Survivor Series without Vic Miller, huh? How are we supposed to do it? Can it even be done? I don't know. I mean, the show's almost over, and he's been quiet. I mean, what is your problem, Vic? Tell us what's tell us what's wrong. Like, what 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 is your deal? What are you so mad about, huh? What's what is it? Is it contract? Is it money? Is it money, Vic? Are you wanting more money? Is it? Do we not pay you enough?
Thank you for joining us on the Showdown Podcast presents the Survivor Series. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode and this trip down memory lane with Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Um, for Corey Miller, I am Brad Scott. Uh, Vic Miller will be back soon. Um, so, as soon as we work out his contract. Yeah, as soon as we get a contract worked out, uh, he wanted all brown M&Ms. <laughs> so, and he found a couple of red ones, so he was not happy. So, uh, yeah, like I said, Vic will be back soon, but uh, we appreciate you listening. Uh, please rate, review on uh, iTunes. That helps us out a lot. Or follow us on, Podomatic, follow us on Twitter, Stitcher, Podomatic. Please uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, Give us reviews, please. Yes, please. Even if they're bad, we don't care. Yeah. The more hateful, the better. Yeah. So from and all maybe of us. we'll read them on the air. Yeah. So from all of us here at the showdown to all of you, we'll see you next time. Thank you and good night.